because there is nothing charging the purple one because the pink one is being charged by the black one greetings welcome back to random tronic my name is chris i thought i haven't done a power bank video for a while what better opportunity i've got a rainbow of my new purchases closely to a steal rather than purchase five power banks those particular ones I've actually managed to get still for a pound, although they were priced at six pounds a piece. The way I got them is they were simply wrongly priced in store. And when I got them and took them to the checkout, I was under the impression that they were supposed to be one pound a piece, but they weren't. At the same time, the store manager has honored the price and let me have those for a pound, which I thought was fantastic. Managed to get a nice bargain. So as you can see they come in a variety of bright colors. I think I've got all of them. Actually I think there was also a white one but I didn't like it as much I guess. They come in a set with those horrible micro USB cables which I would be careful if I was plugging it in because the tolerances on those are quite bad. You can feel that when you plug it in into a phone or something it just goes in so tight. I've actually seen one phone where someone plugged in a dodgy cable and it pulled it out from the phone with the micro USB socket. But the power banks themselves feel rather nice. They've got this uh, rubbery feel type plastic and the back cover over here. And they come with those little strings attached in the box. That's unusual. Normally this is a manual task. So instead of getting wasting time attaching this, um, they'll just drop one in the box. But those actually came with those hook loops attached, which is nice. Micro USB in to charge it and USB port on the output. I've done some tests already. So I had those for a while yeah number one slightly disappointing they do not have a pass through what that means they will not charge while putting the power out let me demonstrate so if i plug this one into this one so now this one the red led comes on and this one is blinking that means this one is charging if i plug in the cable here and plug another cable back to this one still this one is being charged and this one is being discharged and it will only change if i unplug this cable now the pink one is charging from the yellow one if i connect more of them like this let's see what will happen there are some notes over here i've made on a piece of tape more on that in a moment that's just my measurements of capacity and charging current and so on but let's see so this one the black one is charging the pink one so let's plug in another one and you see the pink one is not charging the purple one because it is being charged by the black one but if i plug in the purple one to the yellow one the purple one is happily charging the yellow one because there is nothing charging the purple one because the pink one is being charged by the black one okay one more this is fun now if i plug in green one you can see only those two are being charged watch watch what happens if i unplug the black one this one stopped being charged so it started charging the purple one and because the purple one received charging it stopped charging the yellow one because the yellow one stopped charging it started charging the green one now if i plug in this one back in it changes back to those now what happens makes me wonder if I complete the circuit all the way around, this one is being charged, so it won't charge this one, right? So I think nothing will happen when you have odd number. Oh, that's no good. That's rather funny. So when I complete the circuit, I can hear a buzzing noise. Okay, everything's still working. As you could see, when I plugged this one to complete the circuit, even though this one is not being charged, but it would have started charging this one. So that means this one stopped being charged and would start charging. It should oscillate, but uh, yeah, it oscillates at rather high frequency. I can almost hear a little audible sound. yeah the lights go dim don't want to damage that but that's interesting what happens if i do one segment less i guess nothing will so 
if you have an odd number it will give you trouble if you get have an even number nothing will happen at all so in this case those two are charging those two until those go dead then those would start charging those two and that's it enough messing around uh, let's open one up any mini miny mo yellow one i don't think it's going to be too difficult to open those up there aren't any screws visible on the outside i think the white plastic is just simply clicked in with a, a few little clips yeah there we go now the shop i got this from was called bargain buys but strangely after i made the purchase and paid my five pounds for this lot the receipt claimed pound world which is unusual maybe the shop is just in a transition or maybe bargain buys is part of pound world corporation it's amazing what a single unit of currency can get you these days you can actually get a working piece of equipment electronics that someone assembled on the other side of the planet so here is the insides and we've got two 18650s and a charging circuit is that going to come out it looks like it should and a wire just came off it's a little bit stiff but there we go came out so just a little bit of flux very lousy soldering on here they haven't put the wires through the holes on the pcb they just simply put them onto the pad and hoped for the best and it's a very lousy repair on my part because i'm doing exactly the same thing that will be all right what we have is two 18650s a piece of sticky tape to i guess hold them but it's a double-sided foamy type sticky tape which they haven't bothered to peel off the other side so it's only just stuck onto the batteries almost as if it was supposed to hold the black wire coming back from the negative of 18650s now the 18650s themselves not sure what those are really corrosion on the positive contact it's a little bit it's not very shiny there are no markings on the batteries and the circuit i'm using plus four zoom ring or macro ring on the camcorder here we see um, all the silicon and all the components on the board we've got in the top left 8205a a six pin sot device another one dw 01a a few passives inductor a few more passives and the main switching chip mp3401a 39th week 2016 so fresh of the factory just under a year old on the back we've got the usb port and the dodgy battery connectors and the led now there is another led led marked lc which is i don't know led charging fitted but there is a space for another led lo led output maybe i'm not too sure maybe let's put a led onto it and see what will happen i've got a random led over here that i can just i should be able to just tuck it onto those existing pads and now let's plug something into it so first let's see what happens when we start drawing current from this to this mm, nothing is this one dead maybe let's try the other way so let's try charging it and this led is blinking so this one is charging this one that's fine but it would didn't want to charge the other way maybe this one's completely flat let's try one more time the other way okay now it's charging but i don't see this led doing anything now it's actually glowing okay let's get a better led that's better the old type leds like the one i tried before they require much higher voltage and much higher current they are not as efficient but here we can see both of those light up so if i unplug this presumably it should go switch off in a moment yes it did and both did, did it simultaneously 
So let's plug this in. Okay, what a disappointment. So the other LED doesn't do anything. It's basically the same thing as the other, as the one mounted in. So it hasn't got another function. I was getting excited. I'll be able to make this do something a little bit more. Now, unfortunately, there is no secret function and we cannot improve this power bank. So I did a few tests on those. It tests out quite okay. I mean, it's an it's a inexpensive power bank. It's um, actually very expensive as far as power banks go because normally you can get them for about a pound. For six pounds, I'd say it's a little bit much for those. However much they were supposed to be in that shop. And click and it's back in. So now we can stuff the battery back in and close the lid. As far as charging, those power banks do actually work and store energy and all that. And on the back over here, I did a few tests. So I used this little power bank meter and I was charging another one from it just to see and measure up what sort of capacity I'll get in them. After measuring, this one took in 4198 milliamp hours on the first charge, which is quite a bit, 2 amp hours per battery. And um, that was the first charge, and it stopped charging the battery at precisely 4.204 volts, which is good. That means it's not overcharging the batteries, but it's pushing them, yeah, reasonable. 4.2 volts is, uh, is okay for lithium uh, ion batteries for the 18650s. Then when I use this power bank as a source, fully charged and start charging something else out, I was able to get only 2543 milliamps out, at which point it stopped charging. It cuts off at 2.945 volts on the battery terminals, just under 3 volts. I don't think you can do much more to lithium ion batteries without damaging them. Again, the protection chip inside did work. I gave it a second charge and it took 3924 milliamps on the second charge. So more or less about four amp hours in and about two and a half amp hours out. Cutoff was 2.98 volts. They also have another function. So the LED will start blinking at 3.62 volts. At the moment is um, this one is providing the energy to this one. And the LED is solid, that means it's switched on. When it gets to about 3.62 volts, this LED will start blinking too, letting you know that the battery is re running low. And as it gets to 2.945 volts, it will just shut off. I've charged this one as well, and it was similar capacity, 3897 milliamp hours, 4 amp hours going in. And you can expect about two and a half amp hours going out. So there's quite a bit of a loss happening in the circuitry during the charging process and also during the providing energy process when this is used as a source. But nonetheless, they're good power banks. They're nice power banks. Quality wise, they feel okay. They do the job. They don't overcharge anything. Here is what I was able to quickly find on the chip inside the MP3401A. And it's a dedicated power bank chip. We've got uh, the USB in, USB out, and the battery is here, the inductor, a few passives. Uh, interestingly, it does call for two separate LEDs. So maybe I'll experiment with that a little bit more and yeah, just solder one in and have it running for a while, use it and see what this LED will produce. When I first googled the MP3401A, uh, a lot of data sheets come up with just a MOSFET, which this clearly isn't. It's a lithium battery charging circuit. But if I dig a little bit more, maybe I'll find the right data sheet for it and see if I can add another LED to see what will happen. So according to this picture, over here um, it will do up to one amp now i was able to draw more than one amp from it uh, it was fine it was drawing up to about 1.3 amps uh, out of the power bank which is nice and the only thing is uh, sometimes it gets to this funny mode where it will put uh, output the voltage and then it will switch off almost reboot and then go back into char into charging just fine 
but it just momentarily stops charging the phone that's at high current so the, maybe that's the overcurrent protection kicking in and just restarting the charging cycle and I'll plug in my phone it's dropped a couple of percent on battery and there we go uh, 1. 1. 1.1 1 .1 amp just under so yeah it will do that voltage is 4.8 volts and 1 amp which is fine and it's dropping because the phone is nearly full it's about 98 percent they will output a decent amount of current that's really good some power banks do only five six hundred milliamps which is rubbish there we go a rainbow of power banks that's it for this video i'm not sure what else i can do with those uh, at the moment i'm testing those about as i said about two and a half amp hours of output capacity which is somewhat decent i was able to get a full charge on a phone out of those so that's good thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed it please do subscribe for more random stuff electronics related of course that i'll come up with in the coming days please do give me a like on this video if you have enjoyed it and i guess take care